The picture, entitled Quarrels with the Dew Protector, was produced by early 18th century satirical artist William Hogarth. It is part two of a six-part series called The Harlot's Progress that tells the turbulent life of a young working lady named Mary Hockabout. Before explaining the picture, I will briefly tell you more about the artist William Hogarth. He was born in the year 1697 in London, England, and grew up to be a pioneer of satirical political cartoons. Even to this day, his cartoons are emulated. Rather than solely a portrait or landscape artist, Hogarth combined both facets with the addition of a story. The amount of detail in many of his works is awe-inspiring. Following on from the first picture, where Mary has been a working lady on the dangerous streets of London, we now found her rescued from this risky lifestyle by a kind Jewish merchant, who acting as a sugar daddy has given her a beautiful apartment with an abundance of luxurious furnishings. To complement this new lifestyle, a maid and an African servant boy have been employed at the apartment to make life pleasant for the young Mary Hackabout. The pet monkey racing around the room is there solely to provide entertainment. Were these material goods a request or gift provided by the wealthy merchant is unknown. Please remember, back in the 18th century, it was common for the aristocracy to employ African servant boys. Thankfully, much has changed since then. The story begins with the unexpected visit of the Jewish merchant to Mary's apartment. Unbeknown to the merchant, Mary has been enjoying herself the previous night at a masquerade ball, a popular form of social gathering where people would dress up in period costume, wear masks to hide one's identity, and dance to classical music. It was here she met a young lover who was invited back to her place for a bit of rompy pompey, that is, lovemaking. The discovery of a new lover would have damaging repercussions, so whilst the merchant is sat down drinking tea, Mary decides to kick the table over, causing the teapot to come crashing down on the floor, thereby distracting the merchant with the aid of the maid who is carrying his shoes the lover successfully exits quickly out of the apartment without being seen. Many of Hogarth's works have background images that carry messages relating to the actual picture. For this picture, Hogarth chose religious imagery. God orders Jonah to visit the city of Nineveh to warn them they are doing bad things. Not wanting to go, Jonah sails away aboard a ship. When there is a storm, Jonah gets thrown overboard by the crew. He's eaten by a whale, which eventually spits him out. Jonah decides to visit the people of Nineveh to prophesy, saying, In forty days, Nineveh shall be destroyed. Jonah waits outside for the city to be destroyed. He sits under a plant that gives him shade from the sun. A worm eats the plant so that he becomes uncomfortably hot and irritated. God says, You care more about this plant than the people of Nineveh. The story of Uzzah is much more bloodthirsty. It involves the character King David. You know the one that slew Goliath? Well, King David is transporting the Ark of the Covenant by cart. However, God has given strict instructions that the covenant must be carried by priests, as shown in the picture. Along the journey, the covenant begins to fall off the cart, and Uzzah, one of David's helpers, tries to prevent the covenant from falling by touching it. Due to this foolish act, Uzzah was stabbed in the back by a priest. Thomas Walston was a follower of Deism, a belief that there is a God, but one who does not interfere in the natural events of humanity. Preaching Deism to the masses brought Thomas Walston into trouble with the law, which had landed him in prison. Deciphering the meaning of the images posed a major problem, as there are many different interpretations of religious scripture, not just in the Bible, but in all religions. Therefore, it is difficult to decipher the true meaning as William Hogarth saw it. Both pictures have subjects who could be described as caring, self-centred, and most relevantly, ignore the word of God, and it is because of this they are being punished. The most important question is which background paintings are connected to the characters Mary Hockabout and the Jewish merchant. Is it just one, or both of them? The Jewish merchant is certainly connected to the pictures for two reasons. One, Uzzah is stabbed in the back by the priest, likewise, the Jewish merchant looks to being stabbed in the back by the lover's sword. And two, both stories come from the Old Testament, a book written about the history of Jews before the birth of Christ. In both religious pictures, 
and the main picture it appears to be a case of giving help where it is not needed. Jonah has tried to help the people of Nineveh repent and is now waiting for them to be punished for the wrong reasons. Ezer is trying to help prevent the Ark of the Covenant falling from the cot when he knows not to touch it. Likewise, the Jewish merchant is helping the vulnerable Miss Hackabout off the streets so that he can make love to her. Their punishments vary dramatically. Jonah is made to feel uncomfortably hot when the worm eats the tree leaves. Uzzah quite literally gets stabbed in the back by a priest and the unlucky Jewish merchant is cheated on by the deceitful Mary Huckabout. The other characters still suffer the consequences of their actions. The people of Nineveh might still suffer the wrath of God. The Ark of the Covenant might still fall off the cart. And as for the main picture, the sexually promiscuous Miss Huckabout will eventually be punished for making numerous mistakes, as shown in the next four pictures in the series. Many people don't realise that anti-Semitism, which means hatred towards the Jews, existed hundreds of years before Adolf Hitler came along. So as a person of Jewish descent, I was most interested to discover whether or not the Jewish merchant in the picture is portrayed in an anti-Semitic way, like for example fictional Jewish characters such as Fagin from Charles Dickens' Oliver Twist and Shylock from Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. Do any of these three characters have anything in common? Is there a connection? Physically, the Jewish merchant appears quite ordinary. No stereotypical hooked nose and hunched back, common anti-Semitic traits. His character is that of a kind and considerate gentleman helping the young vulnerable Mary Hook about. So what is the connection? Well, look at the location of the Jewish merchant in the picture. He's right in the centre. Like Fagin and Shylock, the Jewish merchant is a secondary character. And yet it appears they all have equal importance as the main protagonists. Funnily enough, many people cannot identify the main protagonist in the Merchant of Venice. He was, of course, Antonio. Why is this so? I have no idea. Answers on a postcard, please. Thank you.